I have had this copper spirit scent for 6 or 7 years and I really have enjoyed using it. Lately there have been some issues with the shock cord for the tent poles. It have kind of lost its elasticity making it very difficult to assemble the tent poles. And the rainfly have lost its water repellency so it's just soaking up water and are wetting out and then the tent is just plain dirty and there's a hole in the mess. So instead of just buying a new tent, I thought I would give it a good makeover. First I will be checking the taped seam ceiling and it looks to be well attached and that's a huge relief because I just hate seam ceiling. Also on the bottom of the tent, the seam ceiling is all right. That's very good. I previously had some holes in the tent which I have uh, patched and glued on with some silk nylon glue and they are still well attached. If you hold the tent up again, some light, it's easy to see if there should be any holes or damage, but it seems to be all right. Before washing, I'm securing the guidelines with some elastic bands so that they won't get tangled up in the washing process. And of course you need to zip up the zippers for washing the tent. I have ordered some Nick Wax Tech wash. To get uh, rid of the stains, I will apply some Nick Wax to the stains on the bottom of the tent. And then let it soak in. Apply some water and one cup of Nick Wax. And then you just have to wash the tent. Maybe you wanna let it be here in for a little while so it can clean itself. And be sure to get rid of all the air inside of the tent. You can use the same water for the fly, but you can see it's already a little bit dirty. Get rid of all the air. To get rid of all the soap, I put it into clean water for like three times. Be sure to get rid of all the soap. And now the tent is, of course, soaking wet. So, I will just hang it up here. I guess it will take at least 24 hours before it's dry. While the tent is drying, I thought I would take a look at the stakes. They are all here, all six of them, but uh, some of the line need to be tightened a little bit, and they are full of dirt. The worst thing about this tent is the elastic line inside of the tent poles. It is completely dead and it makes it impossible to assemble the tent poles. So I definitely need to do something about this. In order to get a new shock cord, I contacted at Big Agnes and it turned out to be a little bit complicated to say the least. I had to pay $10 for the cord 
and then I had to pay $30 in shipping and it just took forever for it to leave US. <laughs> and then it was caught up in Danish customs and I had to pay them $25. So after 24 days I finally received the court and I ended up paying $65 for this shock court. Haha. <laughs> Unscrew the whole tip. Attach the new line with some gaff tape. Run it through the ten poles. Make a new nut. Attach it to the pole tip and screw it in. Tighten the shock cord and secure it with some gaff tape. Cut it. Make a new nut. Big Agnes Repair Center, and I'm here to tie a loop to anchor the tip. This is technically called a slipped overhand knot. The lines are connected, but remember also to change the shock cord on the spreader bar. Here I have attached the repair splint. I'm refreshing the old gaff tape with some new. And that could come in handy if you end up in an emergency. I have attached some elastic line to the roof of the inner tent and if the elastic line is too loose you can just tighten it here. Before waterproofing the tent I went to Nick Wax's homepage. There was not much help to find here. They are not revealing any secrets. Other than this uh, product also should protect the tent against the uh, harmful UV radiation from the sun and then they have this stupid instruction video that is just like a commercial. I was setting up the tent in the fast line mode as Big Agnes calls it where you don't use the inner tent but instead attaches the tent poles to the ground sheet. I was making sure that the tent fabric was nice and tight and well attached. Nick Wax tent gear and solar proof should uh, waterproof the tent and protect it against the sun and it should be without fluor carbon. Poor, it smells toxic. Start from the top and work your way down to the bottom and be sure to remove surplus liquid with a cloth. The bottom of the inner tent is the same material as the fly so I chose to impregnate that too and then it was just uh, to hang it up and wait for it to dry completely. The next 
next day I checked the tent and it was completely dry. I sprayed the tent fabric with some uh, clean water and I could really see that the water repellency of the Sil Nylon have improved. I'm so confident about the waterproofing that I'm leaving a camera inside of the tent. Okay, let the test begin. The water repellency is really great and it's not soaking in at all. The water just runs well. And here on the inside, it is completely dry. That's very good. I am very pleased with the result. Maybe this tent is not for the mountains, but it's still a great one-person tent. And now I don't need to buy a new tent.